Thinking about becoming a HGV driver? Want to know how much we earn? Well, I'm going to go through all the categories from seven and a half ton straight up to class one, which is an articulated lorry, if you didn't know, which is basically a tractor and a trailer. So if you are interested, stay tuned and I'll see you in a sec. Let's get straight into this. questions that you are obviously going to want to know is not just how much you can earn how much it's going to actually cost you to get into the industry now these days you can do a car license so if you have your car license you go straight from your car license straight to an articulated lorry which is class one which is what i drive this and that's going to cost you i would say in the region of 1500 pounds to 2000 pounds depending on location and who you do your training with, including your CPC and all your cards and all the special little doodads that you're gonna need. So let's just go with the 2000 pound mark, right? So what are you gonna earn once you pass that? So you've passed your test, you've got your license, you've got your CPC cards and all that jazz. Now you're gonna go look for a job. What are you gonna be expecting to earn? Now, this will depend on what kind of work you go for. Me personally, I went straight into class two first because I had to do my class two license before I could get my class one license. Therefore, I got about six months experience doing that. At the time I was on, what was it? 29,000, we're talking five years ago. So yeah, since then I'd say you'd probably be expecting on a class two around 32,000 to 36,000 pounds a year. You can go up more than that because there's quite a demand for class two drivers because most people want to do the class one. Now you've got some experience, you've done a bit of class two work, you've worked your way up, now you're gonna do a class one job. Or maybe you're just brave enough and you're gonna go straight in for your class one. It's up to you. If you feel confident enough to do that, good on you. Personally, that's not the way that I'd go about it. I would definitely do a bit of class two work, get yourself used to something a bit bigger and then work up to class one. Just makes life a little bit easier when you do get on the road. So you've got your class one, you're in the lorry. How much are you gonna be a class one driver? Well, this is a very good question. I've looked online and you can get anything paying from 10 pound an hour to 20 pound an hour. Now, you do do a lot of hours being a lorry driver and I would say that you should expect to take the minimum of £1,500 per month to £2,500 per month. Now this can be more um, but that would depend on you as an individual whether you want to stay out in your cab all week. So if you want to do a bit of tramping there's prospects of £1,000 a week. Um, that's not something that I personally do. I like to go home because I have a young family and spend time with them. Uh, it might be something that I consider in my older age, but as of now, I'm quite happy just doing day work. I earn fairly good money, I can't complain, and yeah, it just suits my lifestyle. Now, although there are many variations of different types of work in class two, class two being the rigids, in class one, there seems to be a lot more variations of work. You've got all different types. Containers, which is what I'm doing here. Walking floors, which is basically anything from recycled wood, plastic, sand, stone, you name it. They move it around. The walking floor is basically some metal plates and they just push out the product to the back of the lorry. Quite an easy job. Or the older version would be the tipper, which a lot of people uh, prefer to do. You've also got refrigerated lorries, freezer lorries, uh, double decker lorries. It's just so many different variations. Petrol tankers, which obviously, if you know anything about the industry, then you'll know as a fuel tanker driver, you do get 
a slightly higher wage than a normal driver. Um, danger money, I suppose, you would uh, have to put it as, because me personally, it's not something that I aspire to do. Um, the last thing I want to do is um, potentially uh, have a crash in one of them and go up in a big bowl of smoke. It's not a bit of me, uh, but maybe you're that sort of person that likes a little bit of risk. Go for it, crack on. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> it just ain't going to be me. And also, with that kind of job, it's just one of those ones where you just can't afford to mess up at all. Like, you have to be on it all the time. And I did go for a job back a while ago as a petrol tanker driver. And when I actually looked into it, the nitty gritty of it, I just decided it wasn't for me. Uh, welcome for joining me guys. Welcome for joining me. Welcome to the channel. It's Trucky Prowl here. We're going to talk about today how hard it is to find a job these days as a truck driver. Now there's a massive driver shortage, right? According to statistics of last year, there was a hundred thousand driver shortage. A hundred thousand, you say? That's a hell of a lot. Well, it's all bullshit. And let me explain to you why. Now, I'm not one of these conspiracy, conspiracies, conspiracy theorists, conspiracy theorists. Anyway, I'm not one of these people that are into conspiracies, but this is just a simple fact of economics. We need to have a greater demand of truck drivers than we do jobs. The more in demand we are, the higher the wages go. Therefore, I'm just gonna slow down here because we've got a wide load coming. Right, so yeah. The more people there are driving, the more they can drive the wages down. Now, there's two things on this planet that affect how money works and that is the price of fuel and truckers wages now you might be thinking what the hell are we talking about truckers wages well the price of fuel affects truckers wages and the price of wages affects the fuel it all intertwines all right i don't know it doesn't sound like i know what i'm talking about because i'm getting it all muddled and twisted around my head but basically if you have a big influx of people that are looking for the same job, then the employer can pay the employee less money than he would is if he was desperate to find an employee. Make sense? Made sense in my head. I hope it's making sense. I hope you follow me. So basically, what needs to happen is the government needs to promote how much of a shortage there is of jobs in the HGV industry to create an influx of people doing the job, therefore driving the wages back down, or at least staying the same as they are. Because let's face it, I don't think they could go much further down in this economic crisis that we're living in. Um, but yeah, it just sort of stops us from being so, what's the word? Basically now, I could leave this job today and I could go find another job tomorrow. It really would be that easy because there are more jobs than there are drivers. So yes, it's true, there is more jobs than there is drivers, but there's not a 100,000 shortfall. It might be a 30,000, 50,000, I don't know. But they have to boost it up to make it more appealing to you that, oh, I can earn good wages, I can get into that job, and then I can earn good money. Well, it's false advertisement, really. You can earn good money, but if everybody starts getting their license, and everybody starts taking lower wages, because if you are a new driver, you will know straight away that getting a, your first job is not easy. So what are you gonna do? You are gonna take the first job that offers you a job, which is usually going to be a job that's paying you very low wages. That's right, I think I've said wages about 500 times now. 
just getting that out of the way because I'm sliding all over the place. So, what happens then? They can be more choosy, they can pick who they want, and basically, it's better for the economy, that's for sure, because prices of food, prices of everything else will go down. But you as a truck driver, you won't be any better off. Simple. So, this is one of the main reasons why you can't find a job at the moment because the only jobs that are taking people on are the ones that are paying stupid wages. For example, I've seen jobs out there that are paying £10.50 an hour, in some cases even less. Now, no disrespect to McDonald's, but I can earn that by working at McDonald's. Now, to work at McDonald's, you don't have to go and pay £2,000 to get a special licence. You don't have the responsibility 44 ton load you know what I mean 44 ton total but yeah you don't have that responsibility of you could basically kill somebody and if you kill somebody as a professional driver the chances are you're going to prison so yeah it's just one of those things where it doesn't seem very fair it's, it's not the employer's fault it's not the driver's fault it's basically something like every other person in the planet it's government because that's what they want they want cheap labor they want you to be able to just get by and that's that really so if you're struggling to find a job I'm sorry to say you really have been led up a garden path because there isn't a shortage of drivers there's a hell of a lot of jobs. It's just nobody wants to pay the money. They want to drive the wages down. What can you do? Now, I often get asked, did you struggle to find a job when you first started? And yes, of course I did. Even though it was five years ago, I still struggled because I didn't have any experience. I went for many, many jobs, applied for loads, and sometimes didn't even get an answer back. Actually, 90% of the time didn't get an answer back but I kept persevering and I kept play, play, kept applying for different jobs and eventually I got a job as a class one driver four on four off for a company doing fridge freezer work basically fridge freezer work basically it was freezer lorries fridge lorries basically taking fruit all across the country and that done me really well because it was mostly going to distribution centres like the big Tesco's distribution centres or Sainsbury's, all the supermarkets and the places that I was going, there were big, big sort of bays, car parks where you wasn't rushed to do your reverses and it gave you a good practice at getting onto bays and just generally reversing. So if you can i would recommend trying to get into that sort of industry at first the supermarket industry providing you're not delivering to the little small sort of you know tesco express sort of garages and stuff like that then basically yeah doing store distribution centers is probably one of the easiest and best ways of learning to do your reverses without having the stress of people and objects getting in your way so that is one tip that I've got for you there guys um, I don't want to keep waffling on too much in this video um, I just wanted to sort of recover this video I have done a video like this a long time ago uh, but I actually watched it back and it was when I first started doing my videos and I got bored of watching it <laughs> so I thought I need to redo this video just to yeah basically give you a bit of insight and yeah not bore you to tears this time hopefully and if you have liked it please don't forget to give us a like subscribe and hopefully I'll see you on the next video um, your support really does help me I appreciate it the more subscribers I get the more likes I get the more the videos get pushed out there and the better I can make the content um, it's not just content like this I make this is an informative video that I like to do every now and then 
but there's also the actual side of me showing how I do the job and yeah I've done uh, what have I done on here I've done flatbeds tankers containers walking floors you name it I've done it all on this channel so just have a look through some of the videos and hopefully I will see you on the next one thank you for watching bye bye